Yeah. Uh-huh.
Jabihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Jana Balaba Girid Bardahari Gopi Jana Balaba Girid Bardahari Yashoda Nandana Praja Jana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Praja Jana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Netai Gora Ribo, Haribo, Haribo, Haribo. Jai Jai Prabhupad, 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 Prabhupad. Or Premanandi Aribo Nama Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Pristaya Bhutale, Srimati Bhakti Vedanta, Swamini Tina Mine, Namaste Sarasati Devi, Koravani Precharine. 
ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾರಿ ಪಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶ ಸೊ ವಿರ್ ಹಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ನರಾದ ಮುನಿ ಸರ್ಚಿಂಗ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಡಿವೋತಿ who has received the greatest mercy from lord krishna and we heard how narada muni got in touch with prahlad maharaj because he thought prahlad maharaj was the greatest but prahlad maharaj told him about the pandavas and he said the pandavas oh Oh no he said hanuman prahlad maharaj said hanuman and he said prahlad maharaj said i don't do any service but hanuman he does so much service hari krishna hanuman does so much service for the lord so narada muni came to kimparusha loka kimparusha loka you know that place have you been there for a holiday yet Did you go for yatra to Kimparusha Loka? No. Then you didn't see Hanuman. But Hanuman resides in Kimparusha Loka today. It's in Bhumandala. If you read the fifth canto around Mer Mount Meru there's these different places. So Kimparusha Loka Hanuman was residing there. Narada Muni came there. and and hanuman said me i he said no no i'm not a very great devotee he said look lord ramachandra took everybody back to godhead with him sugriva and all the inhabitants of the the kingdom they all went back to godhead with him and he told me to stay here so he said i'm not a very great devotee the lord didn't even want to take me with him back home back to godhead he took sugriva with him they didn't take me and so he said i can't be i can't be a very good devotee but he said the pandavas he said they they really get the mercy of krishna he, Hanuman said I serve Lord Ramachandra in many different ways I've ser I was serving Lord Ramachandra doing everything for him but the Pandavas are so fortunate Krishna serves the Pandavas Lord Krishna did so many things for the Pandavas Lord Krishna he cares so much about the Pandavas right remember all the things Krishna did for the Pandavas Krishna became the chariot driver for Arjuna and he's the messenger for Maharaj Yudhishthir and he's a night watchman sometimes he would stay up all night to guard them and then he got Arjuna married well he arranged that Arjuna could marry Subhadra Krishna's most beautiful attractive sister who Duryodhana wanted to marry and who Lord Balaram wanted to marry Duryodhana but Krishna arranged Krishna let Arjuna marry her so there were there were Hanuman is telling about the Pandavas that they're so great that you have to go and see for yourself He said I can't just describe it all to you you have to go there and see yourself how they how they are so friendly with Lord Krishna that they have such deep friendship with Krishna Krishna would do anything anything for the Pandavas and the Pandavas would do anything for Krishna that is the real bond of friendship so Hanuman was he, Hanuman was telling like this to Narada Muni and Narada Muni became ecstatic and he's dancing and dancing and he said we should go there let's go to Hastinapur and he wants Hanuman to go with them we'll go together let's go because Hanuman is also Dasharas Narada Muni is in Dasharas Hanuman is in also Dasharas the pandavas they're sakyaras but they're mixed with some french with some dasharas so 
they thought it would be good. We should go there, get association, see how Lord Krishna is living there with the Pandavas. So Hanuman, but Hanuman said, no, just a minute, just a minute. He said, uh, I, I can't go off there to Hastinapur. He said, Lord Ramachandra, anytime he might call for me, anytime I have to be ready, anytime he may call me to come to do something for him. And if I'm not there, then we wonder what happened to me, where did I go? Because he told me to stay here. And Hanuman said, I, I'm always thinking of my Lord, my worshipful Lord is Lord Ramachandra. And I cannot replace anybody else in my heart but Lord Ramachandra. Even though I know, I know Krishna, Lord Krishna is Deva Kinanda, and, and I know that Lord Ramachandra is just a, an expansion from Lord Krishna. All right? Ramadi Murti Shukala Niyamena Teshtan Nanavataram Akarod Bhuvane Shukintu Krishna Swayam Samabhavat Paramapamanyo Govinda Madhipursam Tamaham. Lord Brahma, he knows. He knows Lord Ramachandra is just Anamsha of Krishna. But it's Lord Krishna, who is the original supreme personality of Godhead. But Hanuman doesn't care. He doesn't care. He just has. Sita Ram in his heart, he can only serve them. Even though he knows Krishna is his original, but still he's happy to serve Lord Ramachandra and he remembers all the wonderful features of Lord Ramachandra, how he's so compassionate and he's so humble. He always he looks down to the ground. By out of his humility, and he is always strictly following the religious principles. And he vowed only one wife, no other wife, wouldn't marry again. Although he's a Kshatriya king and he could have married, he could have had another wife, but he didn't. He didn't take another wife. It, it's uh, it said when when whenever he did a yagya, he would have a deity of Mother Sita sit by his side, because you know custom is the husband sits with the wife, husband and wife sit together, and the king will sit with his queen, and Lord Rama has no queen to do that. He he's ruling the kingdom. He ruled for. 13,000 years without a queen. So every time he had, he did many, many yagyas. All the time they were doing yagyas, he would have Sita in the deity form sit beside him as his wife. And that situation was reversed in the Kali Yuga because Lord Ramachandra became Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Mahaprabhu, his wife was Vishnu Priya. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he, he took sannyas and left Vishnu Priya. So previously, Lord Ramachandra was alone. Sita had returned back to the earth. She was born from the earth and when after she delivered love and kush, then she entered back into the air. She could not bear the separation from Lord Ramachandra. So she returned to the spiritual world. But with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he took sannyas and Vishnu Priya is left alone. Vishnu Priya is non different from Sita, Mother Sita. The wife of Lord Ramachandra, she comes as Vishnu Priya. And Vishnu Priya is 
alone. So she has the deity of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. You can go and see Dameshwar Mahaprabhu. In Navadvip, they have this deity of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They said this is the deity worshipped by Vishnu Priya. And you see the situation was reversed. Uh, and uh, Hanuman, he comes in Chaitanya Leela as Murari Gupta. Murari Gupta was very important in the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Murari Gupta, his home is just not very far away from the Yoga Peak. If you, you, you know, you've all been to Mayapur, right? Yeah, so you have you seen Marari Gupta's house? Did you see Marari Gupta's house? Yeah, so it's just beside there's Pritu Kund between the Yoga Peet and Marari Gupta's house. There's a, a big it's a rice field now, but it's Pritu Kund. So Marari Gupta's house was there, and he witnessed all the childhood pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and he kept a diary. Murari Gupta's diary were very valuable because when they have to write the biography about the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they used the diary, the different notes which the devotees had taken. Just like Swarup Damodar Goswami, he had also kept some notes and things on the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So the, those notes and diaries, that is how they could write Chaitanya Mangal and Chaitanya Charitamrita and Chaitanya Bhagwat from the help of these diaries, it could guide them. So Marari Gupta, he kept a diary on all the, the Balalila because he was living in Mayapur and he saw all the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He saw from his birth, he saw him grow up and he saw also the older brother Vishwarup, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's older brother Vishwarup, who left home, went away, took sannyas. So Marari Gupta had seen all of these people and he kept the notes about everything. So Marari Gupta was a great devotee of Lord Ramachandra. So one day Chaitanya Mahaprabhu tells him, because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu grew up, so the first 24 years of Chaitanya's pastimes were all, all seen by Murari Gupta. He'd witnessed all 24 years of his pastimes. So he, they had a very, very close, very intimate relationship. So one day, Lord Chaitanya, Nimai Pandit is known at that time. He says to Marari Gupta, he tells Marari Gupta, why are you worshipping Rama, Sita and Ram? Radha and Krishna are the form. That is the supreme form. It is Radha and Krishna. Krishna with Radha, they're the, they're the supreme form. You should worship them. So that night, Marari Gupta could not sleep. And the next morning, he went to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he said, I will have to give up my life. You have asked me to give up the worship of my worshipful Lord Ramachandra, and I cannot do it. So I will have to give up my life. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said to him, he said, no, that's all right. He said, you are Hanuman. You are not different from Hanuman because you have that mood, that faithfulness, that chastity, not to give up your worshipable deity. So that's very important that you, we should have that kind of deep attachment to the Lord, to the particular form of the Lord, which we worship. And so even though it may not be the Supreme, this is the form which I like.
this is the form which attracts me. And Murari Gupta, he, he said, oh, not Murari Gupta, but Hanuman said, Hanuman said, because I've been hearing the pastimes of Lord Krishna, I've become more attached to Lord Rama. By hearing the sweet pastimes of Lord Krishna, it's enriched my devotion for Lord Ramachandra. So this is very nice, this kind of mood which Hanuman has, that he just wants to worship Lord Ramachandra. And there's no way he's ever going to give up the lotus feet of Lord Ramachandra. So Hanuman then talks to uh, Narada Muni and he's telling Narada Muni, he said, you know, don't minimize the position of the Pandavas just because they're householders. You know, sometimes we think that, oh, they're just householders, they're just sense gratifiers, they're just having material enjoyment. So Hanuman and Narada Muni, they're both brahmacharis. You know, they're real brahmacharis, nice tika brahmacharis. Hanuman and uh, Narada Muni, they're fully brahmachari. And they, so Hanuman tells Narada, he said, don't look down on the Pandavas because they're in family life. He said, you should understand what is their glory, the greatness of these Pandavas how they are such staunch devotees and how they love Lord Krishna so much and Lord Krishna loves them. Sometimes devotees are a little bit uh, prejudiced about these things. You know, we think, oh, these this people, they're just householders. What do they know? But we should never make that mistake. There's a, a nice pastime about this, which took place in relation to Ramanuj Acharya. So Ramanuj Acharya, he was a sannyasi, of course, and he was living in Sri Rangam. And there were many brahmacharis also, also there. They were with him, living with him, and living in the temple there. And, so uh, it, it happened there was some householder couple who were coming to the temple. And Ramanuja Charya used to spend a lot of time talking to this householder couple. And they were quite young people, young householder couple. But Ramanuja Charya used to spend a lot, quite a lot of time talking to them. And the other brahmacharis and the, the others there who were renounced, they were thinking, why is Guru Maharaj spent so much time with this, these two, you know? They're just householders, you know? They're just in the family life. Why is he worries about them? He spent so much time talking to them. And they said to the Guru, they said to Ramanuja Charya about this. They said, Guru Maharaj, why you spend so much time? You give so much attention to them. Ramanuja Charya said to the, the house to the Brahmachari, they said, Ah, you don't you don't know the position of this couple that actually, although they're householders, they're very advanced, they're very spiritually advanced. And he said, you want to see how advanced they are? He said, what you can do, he said, you go to their house. You go one night to their house. And he said, sneak into their house and take all their jewelry and see what happens. Bring all their jewelry here. You go to their house, take all their jewelry, bring it here. And so the brahmacharis, they went in the night, they sneaked into this couple's house and they started to steal the jewelry. And the woman was wearing jewelry. They took it off her. And at one point, she moved over a bit 
And when she moved over a bit, then the brahmacharis got afraid that maybe she'll wake up. So they ran away. And then the, then the couple woke up and the husband said to his wife, he said, why did you disturb the brahmacharis? She said, I was moving so to make it easier for them to take the jewelry off. They were so detached, they thought, if the brahmacharis want our jewelry, let them take it. Why they didn't ask us, we could have given it to them if they'd asked us. But they're coming to take it, let them take it. They were so detached, they didn't mind the brahmacharis taking their jewelry. So the brahmacharis brought the jewelry all back to Ramanuja. And the next day, the couple came to the temple. And they said to the couple, they said, is everything okay? And they said, yeah, everything's fine. They never complained. They never said anything, oh, we got robbed in the night. They came and took all of our jewelry. They, they, they asked, is everything all right with you? And they said, yeah, everything's fine. Everything's nice, very nice. They were so detached. They didn't worry about anything. They thought, they, in their mind, they thought, if the brahmacharis want the jewelry, of course, they can have it. They didn't mind. But what happened with the brahmacharis, they had their copans hanging on the line. So somebody went during, during the night and they moved all the copans around. And all, then the brahmacharis come back and they thought, hey, where's my copan? And they all got upset. Oh, ooh, you've got my coping. You put my coping over there. And they were all arguing with each other. It was a whole big ruckus. They were arguing about the copings. And Ramanuja said to them, he said, you see? And he said, you people, you're the brahmacharis. You fight with each other about copings. He said, that household couple, they lost all their jewelry. They didn't say anything. And so you can see the spiritual advancement. So this pastime is there, uh, shows us that you can't judge the spiritual advancement by the ashram. Somebody may be in family life, doesn't mean he's very attached. Bhaktivinoda Thakur was the seventh Goswami. So he was, he was a family man, big family. He married the second time, first wife died, so he married again, and he had 12 children or something. And so, but he's the seventh Goswami, you know, he's so, so renounced. And so, we have to understand what spiritual advancement, not by their ashram, but by their actual dedication, conviction to the service of the Lord. And you can see in the Mahajans also, the 12 Mahajans, a number of the Mahajans are all family men. Swayambhu, Narada, Shambhu, Komar, Kapilo, Manu, Pralado, Janako, Bhishmo, Balir, Vyasa, Kivayam. Swayambhu, Brahma, is he Brahmachari? No. Swayambhu, Narada, Brahmachari. Shambhu, Lord Shiva, is he Brahmachari? No. Komar, Komar, Kapilo, Manu. Manu, is Manu Brahmachari? No. But Kapila and Komar, they are Brahmachari. Pralad, is Pralad Maharaj Brahmachari? No. Pralad, oh, Janaka, is he Brahmachari? No, Bhishma, he's Brahmachari. Mm. Vyasa, Balir, Bali Maharaj, is he Brahmachari? No. Vyasaki, who's Vyasaki? Sukadev Goswami, is he, he's Brahmachari. And Vayam, myself, Yamaraj, is Yamaraj Brahmachari? No. So you see from the Mahajans, they're great authorities in devotional service, but some are in brahmachari life, some are not. That's 
not the criterion for spiritual advancement. The criterion is how much they have committed themselves, how much they have surrendered and taken shelter of the Lord. The gopis are considered the greatest devotees of Krishna. Why? Because they gave up everything for Krishna. They gave up even their own chastity. Now, for a woman, their chastity is very important. As, maybe not so much now, but in the past, in 5,000 years ago, and especially in the village, in the village, it was very important. The young girl, especially, chastity is very important. The gopi sacrificed everything for Krishna. And that's why Krishna said, Naparayeham, I can never repay you that you have given so much for me. They give up everything for Krishna. So that is, that is the advanced devotees. So Hanuman, he's warning Narada Muni, these Pandavas, they're really advanced devotees, you know. But Hanuman says, you know, I, I, can't, I can't just go away there. I can't just go to Hastinapur or to Dwarka to see them. But he tells Narada, you should go. You should go, you should go and see them. When you go there and you see for yourself, you'll be convinced, you will know what great devotees these are, the Pandavas. How they, Krishna is their life and soul. At the same time, the Pandavas, they're not sadhakas, they don't do sadhana because they, all, they have that special relationship with Krishna. They're special devotees. Some devotees, you know, they, they have some special mercy. So Hanuman said, I have, to, I have to be here because at any time Lord Ramachandra may call me, he may want something. And if he calls me, then definitely I will have to go immediately. And, and that, that, that pastime is there, how uh, Lord Krishna was in Dwarka and he said to Garuda, he wants to show, he wanted to show all the devotees in Dwarka about what it means to be steadfast and to be really dedicated to devotional service. So he said to Garuda, he said, you go and go and tell Hanuman to come here. So Garuda flew off to Kimparusha Loka to see Hanuman and he told Hanuman, the Lord of Dwarka, Lord Krishna, he's calling you, he wants to see you immediately in Dwarka, you should come. And Hanuman didn't move and Garuda, he tried to force, he tried to force Hanuman to go. He tried to take Hanuman with him. Hanuman just used his tail and knocked Garuda away. He knocked Garuda away. And Garuda, he fell through the sky and he landed in Dwarka. So he came back to Dwarka, Lord Krishna's laughing at him. And so Lord Krishna then told him, he said, now go and tell him Lord Rama is here and he wants to see him right away. And at that time Krishna changed himself. He became Lord Rama and Balaram became Lakshman. And Satyabhama, she wanted to become Sita, but she couldn't. So Krishna was laughing at her. And then Rukmini became Sita. And so Sita is on the left side of Lord Ramachandra and Garuda goes to Kimparusha Loka and he tells him, Lord Rama wants to see you. He said, I will take you on my back. But Hanuman said, it's okay, I will go on my own. And Garuda came back and he came back, Hanuman was already there. So Hanuman, the example, the steadfast devotional service, very 
eager to serve Lord Ramachandra. Then he doesn't want anything to disturb that relationship. Right? We give the verse the other day. Remember that famous verse? Hanuman said, if, if my liberation means that I'm going to forget that you are the master and I am your servant, then I don't want that. I don't want that liberation. Although liberation is like so, so important, it's so, you know, we want liberation, but Hanuman said, I don't want it if it means I have to give up that relationship where Lord Rama is my master and I am his servant. So then it's a mood, Krishna Bhakti. So Hanuman is the great Dasya Ras. Just, just by his mood of being the servant, he gets all perfection. So Hanuman says, um, you know, I, I, I can't go there. I can't just go running off and leave everything here. Because also, of course, he has his deity there. He had the deity of Lord Ramachandra. And he's serving his deity. Just I told you yesterday about uh, Gadarhar Pandit, he was serving the deity of Tota Gopina. Lord Chaitanya really chastised him because he, he gave up that worship to follow Lord Chaitanya. So we must also be very faithful and committed to our service to Krishna. Prabhupada liked to see that commitment, that devotee would go to a place and just stay there and develop it and develop it. In the beginning, when devotees first came to India, one of the most difficult places was Delhi. It was really difficult. In 1970s, it was really difficult. One thing, the language. <laughs> Hardly anybody speaks English in Delhi. <laughs> you know, in Delhi, it's really Hindi. Ram, everyone's a Ram Bhakta and Hindi. But anyway, Prabhupada wanted temples there. He said there should be a temple in every village there in, in, in Delhi. So, in the beginning, he put different devotees there, and one after another, they'd leave. They'd say, no, no, I can't stay here. I don't want to stay here. Because Delhi, very hot in the summer, very cold in the winter. <laughs> so difficult also for preaching. It was difficult to get started. Now, because Gopal Krishna Maharaj went there and stayed there and stuck it out, gradually got more and more people. So it developed, but took time, takes time. Have to be patient. So that determination is required. Right? Remember the example for determination? Determin the example is there in the Bhagavad Gita about determination, the little sparrow, right? The little sparrow lost its eggs to the ocean. And the little sparrow was so upset. He said, okay, I'm going to drink the ocean dry. And the little sparrow began. He was trying to drink the ocean dry. <laughs> Other birds were laughing. But the word came to Garuda, and Garuda came to help. And Garuda said to the ocean, you give the sparrow back his eggs, or else I will drink you dry. So then the ocean brought back the eggs and returned to the sparrow. So like this, this kind of determination is required. Krishna consciousness, to, be, to spread Krishna consciousness, it's not an easy thing. There's so many other groups here in India 
there are so many other groups, so many other sects, different gurus, different sampradayas, everything is here. You got everything here. Not an easy task to give Krishna consciousness. You know, everybody, most people, they've all got something, they've got their own guru or their own ashram or their, their whatever cult sector in. And then also in India, you know, people say, I know all this. You know, we hear that a lot. I know all this. I know all this. I've read Bhagavad Gita. I know Krishna. So it's very difficult. There are many challenges in spreading Krishna consciousness. We have to be very determined, very steady, very firm. We have to have faith. Just like Hanuman, he's got the order from Lord Ramachandra, you stay here. Don't you just stay here and show the example to preach, to chant the holy name. And wherever there is Ramkata, Hanuman will go there to hear the Kata. So Lord Ramachandra is so merciful, it inspires Lord Rama because Hanuman saw Hanuman saw Lord Ramachandra, he was so kind, he was the friend of Sugriva. Because Sugriva was like the monkey king, so Lord Ramachandra was friendly with him. And then Vibhishan came also. Vibhishan came from Lord Rama, from Ravana. And Lord Ramachandra accepts Vibhishan. He accepts him as one of his men. And later on, after the Battle of Lanka, then he installed Vibhishan as the ruler of Lanka. So Hanuman is inspired by all these dealings of Lord Ramachandra. Just like we're also, we also meditate on Prabhupada, right? We hear about Prabhupada and everything Prabhupada did, all Prabhupada's pastimes. We're enjoying reading all the different leelas which are described. We read Prabhupada Leela Amrita and then we now also, Giriraj Maharaj has written his book, Let There Be a Temple, and he tells about the temple with Juhu and the struggle they went through, the conditions they lived in, in Juhu in the beginning, how difficult it was. But Prabhupada was determined, no, we have to have this temple. Prabhupada could see, even although the temple was not opened, Prabhupada was getting ready to depart from the world, but Prabhupada went, he, he came there to Juhu before, before he went to Vrindavan, he came there in Juhu and he was watching and they even put, Prabhupada stayed in the top floor, it's where his room is. They arranged everything for Prabhupada, although the building was not ready, but Prabhupada came and stayed there. And he, could, he liked to hear the, the, the workers hammering and knocking and doing things. He said, this is ecstasy for me, he said, because I know the building is coming up. So at one point, even the, they were buying that land at Juhu and they just gave up. They, they sort of gave up that oh, Prabhupada is so far away and you know, nobody's out there in Juhu. No, but we don't want to be out there. We want to be in the city. We should be in the city, you know. But Prabhupada said, no, we have to keep this land. And you know, they, they just gave up the land and somehow Prabhupada got the land back after they'd given it up. And so, so many different things happened. But because Prabhupada was so determined to push on, and so then they got that land and they got that temple and they opened a nice temple. And look at it today, it's really, it's just so beautiful, so opulent. And Juhu itself has changed so much as well. So Prabhupada could see all that. Prabhupada had the vision. He, he saw the land in the 
like 1971 or something, he saw the land and he thought it would be nice to have a temple there. So Krishna arranges, he fulfills the desire. So Hanuman has that kind of devotion for Lord Ramachandra. He's completely fixed in devotion to Lord Ram. He doesn't want anything to come between him and Lord Ramachandra. Okay, um, read a little more. Hanuman, Hanuman said, actually, it'd be easier for him to give up his own life rather than to give up the service of Lord Ramachandra. To go off to Dwarka with Narada Muni, to go there just to see the Pandavas and to see Krishna, he said, it's easier for me to give up my own life. So that is the, the devotion that a real... A real devotee, real Ram Bhakta. Uh, Hanuman says that maybe you think also the Pandavas are all just politicians because they're Kshatriyas, because they're rulers, they have the kingdom, so they're busy with political affairs. So you should understand that actually the, their interest is Lord Krishna. And whatever they're doing is for the pleasure of Krishna. And the politics and the kingdom mean nothing to them. What is important to them is giving pleasure to Krishna. So Hanuman is pointing out the wonderful qualities which are there, which are in the Pandavas. He's appreciating these good qualities. This is a very nice example of devotee. You know, sometimes, you know, we see another devotee, sometimes we may minimize them. But Hanuman, he's appreciating the good quality there. He minimizes his own position. He says, myself, I'm just a monkey, I'm just a forest animal. But the Pandavas, they're really cultured people. They're aristocratic people. And they're pure, surrendered devotees. They don't have any material desire. Although they could, they could enjoy any kind of opulence. Everything is there. They have so much opulence. But they, without Krishna, it means nothing to them. So, as devotees, we should also think like that. We should want to dedicate everything in relation to Krishna. Okay, are there any questions? Any comment? I heard that Hanuman marries sun god, sun god's daughter. 
could you add more light mahara hanuman married the son god's daughter i never heard no hanuman is a brahmachari who married the son god's daughter son god's daughter that's uh, kalindi yeah yamuna yeah she married krishna the is described one of krishna's principal wives is kalindi and when krishna was with arjuna one day they were hunting and they came by the yamuna river and they saw this young girl there <coughs> so lord krishna told arjuna go and find out who is she what's she doing here so arjuna went to ask her about who she was and she said i am the daughter of the sun god and my father built me a house here because i'm waiting for lord vishnu i i i only want lord vishnu for a husband i don't want to accept any husband except lord vishnu and i'm waiting here when lord vishnu comes then i want him to take me to be his wife so this was kalindi one of krishna's principal wives this does krishna had eight principal gopis he had eight principal wives so one of them was the daughter of the sun god the yamuna or kalindi but i never heard hanuman had a wife i don't know maybe some folk tale or some 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 of these comics sometimes uh, chitra katha or chitra katha something they portray these kind, kind of things sometimes but it's it's not there it's not in valmiki ramayana uh -huh. Okay, Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.